Hey everybody, <clears throat> Bob Trade Genius here, the um, Cinco de Mayo. I think after today we all need a drink. The market <clears throat> is doing some really crazy stuff here. And um, if you look on a daily, it looks like a lot of consolidation down here, just like it did here. But <clears throat> just wanted to point out to you, this is the handle. This is the cup. <clears throat> They tried to push it up into what I would consider the reversal area. And then we got a failure back down again. And so my concern now is, you know, can it go up tomorrow? Potentially, sure. <clears throat> we had a 94, 95% uh, down day. <clears throat> Usually um, there's a tail into that for people that are getting margin called or just sick and tired of, <clears throat> of the market. And then you usually get a reversal towards the end of day Friday. But that means nothing because then the next week we just start selling all over again. And the uh, the dollar is just uh, relentlessly strong right now. And the 10-year uh, is pushing up too. And so I went ahead and looked uh, at the um, 30, 60, 90 days, 2000, 2008, gold oil, stocks, <clears throat> bonds, and it was such a mixed bag. Okay, so we had a day where the market was down 3%. Bonds were off again. And two times it happened in, in, in history, basically 2000 in the spring and 2008 in the fall. 2008, it started marking the bottom. But the difference is, is that we, um, we already stopped hiking rates by then. And 2000, we um, were pretty much done hiking rates as well. This time, we're just starting hiking rates. And so does it is really 1994 really in play here? Um, I didn't get a chance to look that far back. I'm trading view doesn't take me back that far. But my view is this, is that I think NASDAQ's already in a 2000 to 2008 kind of decline. And I think it has further to go. In 2000, we fell for another year uh, pretty hard into uh, 2001 on NASDAQ. We already have apparently 80% of all NASDAQ stocks are in a bear market. And so people end up at the NASDAQ's only down 15%. That means Apple and Amazon, Netflix, you know, Google, Microsoft, all those uh, Tesla are all holding the market up. And they'll start to crumble and we'll just get this relentlessly selling of these passive ETFs. That's my big concern there and just grind everybody to death. Look, I own CCJ. Um, it was already down 25% going into earnings. It killed their earnings. They doubled earnings year over year. They gave a bright outlook and it fell another 7% today. So it just, it just, it just gets washed out as you, you, ETFs get get blown up. And so we're just going to have to be careful with what we own. And one of the things that, that I did today was I, I know I TLT on the spreadsheet. We got that sold off, but I kept mine and uh, I actually added another hundred shares. And as the Fed continues to hike, I'll keep adding another hundred shares of TLT until the hiking stops. And then we'll get a, a downdraft in the, um, uh, in the 10 year, can't avoid it. Uh, we'll go into, they're worried about demand destruction. You're going to see demand destruction like you've never seen before. People just start sitting on their hands, especially if, if energy and food do not, do not abate, everything else is going to fall and fall hard. And we're going to see the 10 year down at the lows we've ever seen it just like we did a couple years ago. There's no choice. People are just going to be defaulting on their debts. They're just going to be walking away. And, and if you look at Europe, Europe's absolute basket case right now. China, I don't know what China's problem is. The, they're either setting up to go to war, they're suicidal, they're trying to bring us down. But whatever they're doing, they're destroying their own productive capacity. And I don't know if they're ever going to recover from it because no matter what policy decision they're making, at some point the Americans are simply going to shift production. We have no choice. You know, Mexico's already cheaper. You know, Vietnam sits over there. India sits over there. Indonesia sits over there. Plenty of places to go. 
And also automation is getting better and better and better. Some of that stuff will get onshored into the United States. So um, whatever they're doing, and if you're listening, Communist China, um, it, it better be good because I don't think you're going to you're going to last it. <clears throat> oil right now. Look, I mean, geez, oil's up again tonight. So uh, whatever they're doing, they're not scaring oil off at all. It broke the downtrend line. So what doesn't go down goes up. So now you have to look at are we going to be bringing $120 barrel of oil back into play again? <clears throat> my only saving grace thing in my portfolio is we own a lot of energy names. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we're relatively protected you know, in my longer term accounts and uh, until oil relents and oil is not inflationary. Everybody will tell you it's inflationary. It's a tax. Oil is a tax, food's a tax. Okay. That's why they eliminate it from the, you know, from their counting of the CPI all the time, because it really, it doesn't contribute to inflation. It contributes to, uh, to deflation. What comes in inflation is the government tries to outrun it or wages try to outrun it like they did in the seventies, but we're nowhere in that environment today. People are opting out. People are retiring. People are on fixed incomes. So I don't see where they're going to get this big push in wage push inflation here with a smaller and smaller shrink of the population. Look, when I was a teenager in the seventies, you know, we were getting cola increases. You know, my parents were every year because that's how it was working. And, you know, and the, the percentage of people working in the economy was far higher percentage than it is today. I mean, we're pushing down at 60%. And, and so it's going to be a problem. And gold, you know, the other thing I worry about gold is gold bottom in 2008, but gold was falling in 2000. <laughs> so um, it's just uh, a hot mess. And uranium actually started taking off, but it took um, the middle of 2001, 2002 before it had its big run up higher too. So the only thing about natural gas and uranium that I like, they're in deficit and they're needed. And I think they're going to get bid. In fact, uranium prices were up today. And it looks like after hours, you got a big pushback higher in CCJ. I'll see if they get a, uh, they get a lift here, but I'm just going to be definitely very, very careful. And so if we fall below 4,000 or 4,100 on a closing basis, we're going to drop another 500 points here, guys. It's, um, that's how the math works. You know, we have these, um, <clears throat> these measured Miyagi's, which are basically these dark pool prints down at, you know, SPY 380. We have head and shoulders down at 340 and we have Mai in at 358. So, that's all sitting up there, and that would probably end the Fed's debacle of what they're trying to do here with the uh, with the economy before trying to fix our supply problems. They're trying to choke off demand, and you may not get, never get the demand back. So, and then supply will come online, and we'll get more deflation. Ay ay ay. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Try to enjoy tonight if you can, and you know because. There's nothing you can do but the best. I'll see you. Bye-bye.